This episode is brought to you by Neosync.net. Looking to get a hosting for your Minecraft server or get a dedicated server? Look no further. Check out Neosync.net, your all-in-one stop to get hosting to fit your needs. Found your perfect match? Perfect. At checkout, use my special promo code MeTimeGamer to get 30% off your first month. You heard that, right? Not feeling like it right now? Bookmark Neosync.net. N-E-O-S-Y-N-C dot net forward slash me time gamer and when you're ready click on the banner go check it out go check their products out and it, and using our, pro- our promo code and our link helps me time gamer out thank you guys on to the show <laughs> Jonathan here from MeTimeGamer.com. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I haven't recorded anything in a while though, but uh, today's actually a special day. I was able to, um, I went, actually won a ticket to go to the Ottawa International Game Convention. So uh, today I'm going to go do that. I'm not sure what I'm going to see there. So, uh, and it is my first conference, so it's a first experience for me and hopefully it's going to be enjoyable. Uh, what I would like to do on my time now, on my time there is uh, find a lot of uh, cool indie publishers. Um, I might, I'll, I'll see how it works. I'm not sure if there's like a lot of tables or stuff like that, but I'll take a lot of pictures so you guys can see on the website. Uh, yeah, so I would like to talk to developers and maybe some people on the floor see what they're thinking about the event and gaming in Ottawa, Ontario in general. So hopefully you guys will enjoy. And um, this is going to be... A, if everything works properly, everything, so this, these are going to be like small interviews with developers about their games, uh, opinions of people on the floor, and uh, we'll see what else what else I can grab. Maybe we'll grab some more interesting stuff that um, might surprise you, me, and we'll have to see from there. So hopefully you'll enjoy. Stay till the end. I don't know how long this is going to be. So uh, thanks for if you're listening to this. Thank you very much, and um, hope to talk to you soon. Bye bye. Hey guys, Jonathan back here for, uh, let's say the first intermission, well not the first intermission, the first part of our, uh, of, uh, Ottawa uh, International Game Conference. I just got out of the keynote, um, so far, uh, what I've seen, uh, just of the bottom floor down, like the present exhibition floor, it seems interesting, I haven't seen anything yet, so I'll, I'll get to do that real soon, um, so... Basically, the keynote was basically an introduction to the event, a quick one, uh, just general guidelines and what it's about. So, interesting fact, it's actually, um, it's been going on for four years now, and uh, it's weird enough because, like I I I started last year doing the website, and uh, I was really starting to get interesting in this. And um, anyway, back on track, it's been doing for four years, and uh, this year is actually the first year. I was lucky enough to get a ticket. I wasn't coming here at first, so that's the, that's the thing uh, you have to keep in mind. So, so far, it was very, it's, uh, what I've seen so far on the floor, it seems interesting. So um, this would be more of a, right now, talk more, but a quick note about the keynote that just happened. Basically, keynote uh, was uh, really about... Um, Focus on wearables or uh, smart smart watches, more more or less. Uh, how 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 these technologies are the, like the pillars of future the t- technology. How how stuff is going to develop in the future and stuff like that. They're talking a bit about VR too. How that's also a first step into uh, uh, the keynote speaker was talking about uh, being the like the introduction or the first footstep in the hol- in uh, the holodeck direction, which was pretty funny, if, uh, in my opinion. But um. Uh, wearables, back to wearables. Um, what they showed, uh, they were talking about how wearables are like it's the next big step in in the evolution of how we communicate and uh, how we interact with everybody else. How it's more fo- uh, driven focus on what we need and when we need it, and not not more like like we have so many so much. I agree that we have so much stuff on our phones that are really most of the time not necessary. Anyway, uh, for my opinion on the keynote, it was interesting to listen. Uh, see what people's opinions are on um, wearables or uh, uh, smartphones. Um, thinking, thinking that it might be the thinking that it's the next step in involvement. Like they were, they were explaining like 
already the, the Pebble Watch already a million people already own it, uh, which is which is great. Don't get me wrong. In 18 months, they said it's pretty good, and they were saying um, another 18 million more were going to get sold. And there's multiple. There's the iWatch and the Android watches and stuff like that from different multiple companies. Um, to be honest, I'm 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 I don't know what to think about wearables so far. That's the thing. I know, I know. This is a video game uh, conference, so we'll, we'll, I'll keep this one short, just to give my my impression on the keynotes. Um, in general, yeah, like I said, it was interesting. Um, uh, thinking that wearables were are the future, I'm still a bit uh, unsure about that, but we'll never know. They they made interesting points, like how like 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 I said, reduction reduction in like spam and stuff on your phone. Like you got like hundreds of apps right on your phone sometimes, and you got so many apps that do nothing and. And watches, watches would be more in a direction like to interact with other people, to get what you need, like temperature, uh, stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think that it's um, like it will. Re- they were talking about like replacing my, our phone. My general opinion on that would be like it's it's hard to say that it would replace your phone because what happens is I, it, it's so limited in what it can do in the small screen. I find so we'll, we'll have to see, right? But. Um, yeah, in general, it's really interesting. It's, uh, but yeah, I don't think it would replace phone, honestly. But it would still, it would still make uh, really, uh, really uh, convincing arguments. So uh, I'll keep it short. It's uh, four minutes, four little four minutes about that. I'll, I'll now I'll go back on the floor, see what's going on. I'll try to get interviews with people uh, with uh, uh, developers. And so there's, I'll, I'll try to focus this more on indies and stuff like because business. I don't really have anything to do with business stuff, more or less. So, um, yeah, I'll go check that, and I'll talk about you guys. See you on the next uh, small uh, small recording. All right, guys, I'm back for another part of my uh, recording for the uh, Ottawa International Game Convention. So I went around the floor a little bit, found a lot of fr- uh, really cool stuff uh, for you guys. i got three games so far. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe go, I'll go back. I'll, I'm, there, um, I don't know if I said it in the first part, but if so, sorry. Uh, there is, um, it's a two-day event. Uh, I don't, I won't have time to do the two days, but I do have. I don't. I think I will have enough time to do, uh, to do um, most of what I want to see because it's, it's like I said earlier, it's really um, mobile, uh, mobile intensive, but it's still fun because I there, there is one I'm going to talk right about now that's uh, a good mobile game. Just a second here. Alright, so the first game I tried out called Quasar. It's from the guys at, uh, from the guys at, sorry, I'm just looking, trying to find a card. Oh, Snap Games. So, uh, if I remember, you said it's a Toronto based company. And, um, it's a project that's actually green, green lit right now that you can go vote for. Uh, I'll give you that address right now. It's actually green, greenlight.com forward, uh, dot, sorry, greenlight dot quasargame.com. So, Quasar is Q U A S A R game. No, I said the end. So basically the game is a, is a space twin, shoot, twin stick shooter. Um, I, I'm not a, I don't play a lot of twin stick shooters, but uh, in this case I really enjoyed it. So basically for right now the game is a, a 10, 10 player um, interactive game either in team or free for all. Um, uh, at, at the conference actually just a two player game right now, but it's actually really, really interesting. I uh, Basically, the, the main, the the, 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 it looks. I when I was talking to uh, Franklin there and his partner, um, he, um, yeah, Franklin. Uh, he was explaining um, the game. Like I said, it's still in, it's still in development. Uh, it's a, it's gonna it's a computer game, of course, a PC game for your uh, Steam. Like I said, because it's greenlit. Um, the game is. Sorry, I just lost my. Uh, yeah, it's a ten-player game, free or together. Um, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the game. It's actually pretty fun. Um, you uh, basically you control a ship. It looks a lot a bit like Resogun, but uh, yeah, the de- developer did say you, there wasn't any ex- any uh, um, any uh, how to say that there wasn't any uh, uh, pull from Resogun. Though you can see the game, the graphics are really nice. Um, it, it, it's basically a, it's also procedurally generated maps, so not like your uh, your 
Counter Strike or Battlefield, where it's always the same maps and stuff like that. These map every round, or I think every yeah every round, um, they they regenerate themselves. So you never play in the same map, which is fun. And there's of course there's boundaries where it goes red, where when you go out of them, and it doesn't. I don't think it kills you. It didn't, it didn't in the demo, but it might be different uh, when the, the the finished game is out. Um, the game. Uh, uh, of course, you got your main shooter. You got special abilities. Um, yeah, it was actually pretty fun. It was actually they were talking about um, bringing it to console. Problem is, is um, it's programmed with um, unit. Uh, f uh, oh, that's out of my Unreal Four, and on the problem, it, can, it, it, it can be por it cannot be ported to um, the Vita. So, but he was talking about the Xbox uh, One and the PS4, which would actually work great because you do have. The, the analog sticks on those controllers, which work actually pretty great. I, 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 you actually, on the demo, you play with a, an Xbox One controller, and it can actually controls really great. It's uh, very intuitive. It's um, basically you use your right analog stick to rotate your ship, and then you put you take the left analog stick to go forward, backward, sideways, or wherever you're going to maneuver around the asteroids and stuff like that. And then you have your uh, your main fire with the, the right trigger and the, 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 your, um, your special ability with the left. Uh, the one the, the ship I use actually it's a sort of a e, EMP grenade or or yeah EMP. So when you get when you're when the enemy gets close enough to you, you you trigger your special and his screen goes green, so he can't do anything, he can't move anything. Gives you the time to attack. Um, uh, the other the other guy I was I was playing with Franklin. He was playing he was playing against me on the other side. Uh, he was playing the other ship, which had a tractor beam. So or was it a tra yeah? I think he called it a tractor beam. Where if you get into its range, it's actually he's a, he's able to control where your ship will go and all that. So preventing you from moving and so like it's actually pretty fun. Uh, he won the game of course because. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a professional twin stick shooter guy, so it was uh, it was a bit weird. Um, ask him about I didn't ask him when the game was going to be released, but the game does seem pretty fun and the graphics are really amazing. Uh, they was talking about uh, he wanted this game to be a uh, uh, esport, which I, I would see. It's like I'm not a, I'm, I don't know a lot about esports, but um, this game is actually really fun for for the amount I played. Um, we were talking about multiple different modes coming. Like uh, he was talking, I mentioned, I asked him if he was going to do sort of a capture the flag kind of thing. He said there was something like that. He said one of the other big modes he was uh, concentrating, uh, they he wanted to promote besides free to play and sorry about that, free to play and uh, team deathmatch. Uh, he was talking about sort of a, I don't remember what he called the mode, but it's um, it's a sort of a. Um, uh, one, it's basically ten. Let's say you're playing ten versus ten. You got one team that has a mothership bigger than the other ones, and you have four other players that protect that mothership. And then you have other, five other t players on the other team that will try to destroy the mothership. So that's. Uh, I think it was comparing it to CS earlier. There's a mission that the, the well, what did they call it? Uh, Escorter. Um, or something like that. Anyway, you, you, you guys understand. There's, I think, um, Call of Duty and Battlefield do have some modes like that, too. I'm not sure. But uh, that would be interesting to see, and that's kind of thing. Like, the asteroids are... The design of the game, like, you have to go around asteroids and stuff like that. So I had a really fun time talking to Franklin and uh, his partner there. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, unfortunately. Um, he said he will be... He, do, he did have somebody else to stream, so you guys can probably check... Uh, He's probably got a. I got a card here. I'll go check. I'll try to post in the uh, podcast article um, the, um, the, the, the the trailer. Like uh, I'll try with the other ones too. So the next the next game I went to see was actually a tablet game. Uh, if you went to if you you guys come to the site often, you uh, you see I don't talk about a lot of mobile games. I'm not I'm not always a big fan of mobile games. It's it's more of a casual game thing than I'm. Of course, if you come to the website, you'll see I'm more of a hardcore gamer, console gamer. Lately, as of late, I've been a lot of PC game too. Uh, no, don't worry, I won't go PC Master Race on you guys. I'm gonna stay more console guy. But if if you watch the stream, I still play a lot of uh, still play a lot of um, of console games. Um, so yeah, the, the game is called uh, Pro Field Golf. It's a tablet game. Um, basically, it's I talked to uh, Stacy Shulak, which she's a staffing and human resources partner there at uh, Behavior. That's in uh, Montreal, uh, Montreal uh, game company. So basically, the basically like the name says, it's a golf game. Uh, for for a tablet game, I was really impressed by the graphics. The graphics were really amazing. 
Um, it's a golf game. That I won't explain to you how the game of golf works. You know how it works. So basically, the controls, the way it works, is you have to you hold where the where your um, your um, your uh, sorry where the player your player's uh, golf club is. You hold it, and then after that, you pull back on it to create a line of a line of let's say a line of fire because I don't remember the other the, the line of shot or whatever you want to call it. And, um, yeah, so you align it to where you're, you want it to be. Of course, you want you want to shoot as close as the hole as possible. And then after that, once you align it, you go like you hold you hold your finger down, you align it, tracking your finger on the touch screen. And then uh, as soon as you get where you you align it up, then you just let it go. And then you can um, when there's a golf ball that appears on the screen, and when it reaches to the edge of the circle, you have to press it to get a perfect, great shot or anything any like sort of like um the way the way you would see like when you're playing a uh, rock band or something when you get a grade you got the the right key or whatever you got it in time or stuff like that but you have to tap on the screen in this case uh you do have power-ups i didn't get a chance to try it because i can't i can't play for two hours the same game there and i gotta move around a bit but uh, the game was really interesting it's really it's really intuitive when i played um it took me two seconds to understand how the game worked she explained it to me quickly there but basically she uh, as soon as i started playing i really enjoyed the game if you guys check out, i don't know if it's out yet i didn't get a chance to ask if it was out or if it, it will it's coming out soon you guys can probably go check that out on uh, on their on their website it's uh, bhvr.com i'll try to post all the links of the games that I, I will talk about in the podcast, so you guys can go check them out. Check them out. Um, yeah, so yeah, so that's a nice tablet game. Like I said, not a big fan of usually tablet games, but this game was actually pretty interesting. It's actually very intuitive and a tablet. I don't know if it's on uh, phones. I would see it on the phone. It seems like it would fit on a larger type type phone tablet. It works perfect. It's, the size is good. Uh, the other, the last game I was able to see for this segment, uh, was say it's called. I, I'm not sure if this is the developer's name or the game's name. Well, I'm assuming it's the game's name. It's called Cerebrum. It's uh, it's a game that is um, it's per, it's uh, on VR. The the one I played on was actually uh, um, uh, it was a, 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 a what the hell a Samsung. Uh, the Samsung VR, sorry, I don't remember the name at this moment. So basically, uh, the game is actually a VR learning game. So it's basically, you look, you, it's, a, it's a spaceship, it's a spaceship battling game. And basically what you have to do is, um, it's to emphasize how to learn cognitive skills and develop uh, with the VR. Of course, you can touch on the side of the VR unit to shoot, or you can just look at it and it will shoot after a couple of seconds. And um, it's, it's, it's really good to remember, the, the game's really good to try to remember colors and uh, patterns and stuff like that. The, the two mini games that were involved there, that's what the focus was. So one of the mini games was actually, uh, you get you start with two, two missiles, you have to shoot two enemies. And basically, um, you, you, you get the two, the two missiles have two different colors. In this case, I'll, for example, one is black, one is red. So you have to remember, you have to look which, remember which one is which because the the color become like just white after. And you have to remember what white or grayish, and uh, you have to remember which one is which color because after after the timer, or after they're done positioning themselves, because what happens is they they float around this, the the screen and they reposition themselves and you have to remember which one's which so after a while you look you look at the screen and uh, the color the, sh- the two ships they have colors around them and then after that one of the one of the missiles starts flashing and you have to you have to be quick to decide that missile what color it was and which to which ship it's going the right color ship the, the color that anyway you understand what I mean that was really fun uh, it gets up to five missiles if I remember so it gets it probably gets really intense I only got up to three and I did okay on that one uh, first I wasn't quite sure what I was doing um, to do an interlude here actually this is the first VR experience I did have it's not Oculus but it is powered by Oculus so uh, the headset with that's the Samsung headset was actually very comfortable to wear uh, I had a fun time wearing it um it, wor- it worked uh, on a Samsung Galaxy 6, if I remember correctly, he was saying. That the, the, yeah, the, the Samsung VR works with, uh, with a phone in the case. So it's not, it's not like Oculus or Morpheus VR, but it's still very interesting to work. I really enjoyed it. It didn't seem like 
it, it, it did. It wasn't. It, it wasn't nauseating or anything like that. It was really fun, and it had a perfect perception. So what happens is what I did first when I logged in. Since it's the first time I VR, I, turned, I did what I'm supposed to do. I looked around, did 360 up, down, in any, every direction, and I really enjoyed. It. It's really fun. There wasn't any. I don't know how you call that, but when you, so I know Oculus. The first models of Oculus, when you turn too quickly, you had a, a problem where it, it couldn't generate the. I don't know if that's called latency. I'm not sure. But when you turn quickly, you do. You, let's say you do 180, it didn't generate the map fast enough, which uh, appara- apparently Morpheus does better. And apparently Morpheus is really good at that, like generating the, the graphics before you when you do a 180 real quick. But anyway, so for my first experience, it's not, I'll tr- there's another game down there that I might I might try to see if I can do. There's an actual Oculus on the floor here. I think there's two more. I think I'm not sure, but I will try it out. Um, yeah, so that's that was the first game. So that's uh, uh, for my first year. I'm that's that's the thing I was saying. I don't, I don't know if I mentioned it on the podcast before, but I was saying that I I, I wouldn't mind trying VR. Uh, per- personally, me, I'm probably gonna buy Morpheus when it comes out, but I, I have to look at the price. If it's if it's like four hundred dollars for a VR headset, I'd be a bit hesitant to buy it because it is. It seems kind of quite expensive for an accessory to something. Who knows if there's going to be a lot of support for it? But anyway, uh, unfortunately, there's no Morpheus here. I would love to try the Morpheus. And PlayStation's not at this event. You got Microsoft. I didn't get a chance to go check them out yet. But um, uh, yeah, so basically, okay. So the, the next mini game in Cerebrum uh, was um, you have to remember pattern. So basically, do you have um, sort of like bejeweled looking uh, things in front of your screen. So the first mode when it starts is you have there's the first the first bejewel what it jam or whatever goes in goes in down your screen and it goes down. Then you have something that uh, then you have another jewel that goes into the hopper. And the the purpose of the game is you have to say if um, the one that's in the hopper if it's equal if it matches or it doesn't matches the one that was before it. So it goes like so you got an equal and, and, and not equal signal on the left and the right of that jewel that you have to look at to um, or you can tap on the side of the VR unit to say if it is or not. Um, so you have so each time you get it right, it shoots a, it shoots an enemy or shoots a bullet to you at the enemy. It's actually pretty fun. At first, I didn't understand what he was saying, but it worked after all. And then also, what happens is when you get later into the game. Uh, later into that mode, because basically it alternates between the other mode I talked before and this mode. So when you go back to the second time on this mode, it actually blocks the jewel that was. The, it, it shows you what the jewel was before, then it goes down and it hides behind like a, a gate, so you can't see it. So you have to remember. So it helps develop that skill of remembrance, which it d- does really nice. Uh, it's really intuitive. It's not fa- it's not super fast, but it, you do have like a 30 second timer to complete the, the mission as much as you can. Not not just for one, like for all of them to kill all the ships, and uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, like I said, VR, I was a bit confused a bit when I started when I put it on the first, and uh, but I came out. Of, uh, it's actually really, I really enjoyed it a lot. So those are the three games I was. Uh, sorry, I'll go just cerebral more, a bit more. Like I said, it's a it's a learning game. And they were talking about it's, it will be coming to the full Oculus and Morpheus and all those things, which would what's going to be great. It's a, it's a great it's, it would be a great add-on to the to the experience of the VR headsets and all this stuff. So that's going to be enough for this segment. Uh, I'll see if I can get more games on the list to talk about, and um, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Hey guys, I'm back to talk to you about more video games. Uh, so, like I said earlier, uh, this event, the uh, Ottawa International Game Conference, is uh, is is very indie. And this year, what uh, what's surprising? It's uh, it's very uh, space-driven games so far. So, sorry if I seem a bit out of breath there. I've been walking for a bit. So yeah, so the first game, uh, next game, I'm going to talk to you guys that I had a chance to play. It's actually called Goliath. It's from uh, made by students from Carleton University. And um, basically, the game basically what it uh, the game is actually pretty interesting. It's um, sorry, uh, yeah. So basically, it pits uh, four four players playing uh, controllers versus one guy playing a Goliath, basically control, controlled by VR with two um, 
what looks like a num like a Wii nunchuck. I don't know if it's actually a nunchuck, but it looks a lot like that. So basically, he controls the Goliath with triggers, and he shoots the the opposite enemy, the the four players that trying to um, attacking him. So basically, the main mission is uh, the guy controlling the VR or the Goliath. He has to um, keep the relic from being captured from the four other players. And um, uh, I'll try to grab pictures for you guys if I'm able to find an online there, and uh, just so you guys can uh, see what I'm talking about there. Uh, yeah, so the, the the glide controlled by VR, protecting the relic, and um, um, and the other four players can control basically like a sort of looks like a teal uh, steel uh, sorry a seal team basically trying to pick up the artifact. Um, which are played by controllers, which is actually pretty nice. Um, I played. I didn't get a chance to play the VR side because uh, there was always somebody wanting to play the Oculus on that side. Because it is controlled. The glide is controlled by Oculus. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to talk with the, the guys because they were busy a lot. So, um, so basically, yeah, the, the, the game's a first-person shooter. It's really interesting. It reminded me a lot of Evolve. I don't know if they had any inspiration about on that game or anything like that, but it, it was really quite interesting. So basically, the game features like uh, three weapons. Uh, you get like a pistol, a assault rifle, and a grenade launcher. Um, and uh, yeah, it was actually really fun. Uh, the mechanics uh, a bit choppy, a bit, but it, it is students. I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna bust bust balls on this or any, but it was very interesting. Uh, playing this on the seal trying to grab the relic and stuff like that you are time you do have a timer to complete the missions and all that uh that was pretty fun for a student game an indie game uh, like i said i didn't i didn't get the chance to talk to these guys at carlton the students at carlton because they were busy a lot so unfortunately i don't have more information i don't know when it's coming out that like that but the next game i really want to mention is um the guys uh my my uh my my uh corner of this little uh, of uh, this earth uh, students from Algonquin College um, the, the the game game commu- the, the game uh, program there uh, they made a game called they actually called themselves because as at Algonquin they, the guy was telling me uh, sorry I don't remember his name unfortunately I didn't grab a card or anything um, they have to give a name to their studio to give themselves like in the industry credit and they were they called themselves uh, trifold studios or studio studios. Uh, the game is called R01. You actually control a small little robot in third person. And uh, what's fun about the basically this game is a space puzzle platformer game. So there's no there's no shooting or anything like that. So basically the the, the premise of the game is you're a little robot that just landed on I'm assuming moon or planet of some kind. And um, he did he did say that little robot had a nickname but I totally forgot about it. Unfortunately I'm really sorry about that. Um, so yeah, basically you control a small, the small little robot that um, lands on the planet to go find a satellite or uh, a rover type uh, vehicle. And when he gets there, it's in a crater. And when he gets there, he actually he, the the crater on, under him crumbles, and he has to find his way out. So so far, what he explained to me is the game's not completely done because it is a, it was a school project. They it's already done. They graduated and everything. It's a ten person team that actually made this game. Uh, the guy I was talking to was actually the um, the guy that did, made the mock-up and designed the little robot. Uh, sorry, I forgot his name. I'm really sorry <laughs> about that. But yeah. So the, um, basically, what what you have to do in the game is uh, solve puzzles, of course, because it's a puzzle platformer. Uh, what you can do with the little guy, you actually walk. He, it's, it looks like um, again, I'll try to find pictures for you guys and try to so you guys can ch- check it out. Um, the, the, little, the, little, the little robot guy, you can actually roll with him. Like, you press, you press Y on the controller. He was using an Xbox 360 controller, if I remember. And, uh, yeah, you use the, the... You can roll pressing Y or go back to the walking form. So rolling is useful when you want to do jumps and stuff like that. There is a boost button when you press the right trigger. Uh, you can also grab stuff with the, the little robot little robot hands. Grab the little blocks or uh, ramps in this or sometimes I didn't I didn't play a good 15 minutes I didn't go all the way down there because I had to get moving uh, I didn't have that much time to uh, stay there and um, and uh, play for hours um, but yeah you can move stuff you you have to get through the, the it's a it's a 3d puzzle platformer basically the nice graphic it has sort of um it has the cell shading effect from borderlands which would look really nice uh, the 3D world around it, it looked really awesome. It's 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 your be- it's it's really your your general um, uh, straightforward like 
guided guided adventure, right? And you, you go through corridors, jumps, and uh, platforms. You have to solve puzzles. They weren't that hard, of course. I, I wasn't waiting them to be super hard, but they were still very interesting to, to do. And um, yeah, was there anything more in that? That's about it for this game. It's, it's a small game. There's nothing big about it, but it was really interesting. I really had a fun time playing it. The guys at the booth were super nice. Like all the other people I talked to, they really, all really nice. Um, da, 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 do, do, do. Uh, yeah, the other thing they were talking about is like they, they will try, the, the guys there, they would they would like to try to finish the game and getting greenlit and try to bring it. Right now it's playing on, on PC, but they would like to eventually bring it like to Steam and... Uh, like prop Steam proper and um, PS4, Xbox 360. I would like to see it's a nice indie game. And like I was telling him, and when, like I told you guys a couple times, I I'm, I'm I like talking about indie games because they are really interested. You get very interesting like ideas like The Swapper or Outlast or uh, what other games? Minecraft. Like I talked before, Minecraft started as a as an indie game, and you see how big it has become. It's one of the most sold game around. I remember a couple months ago, I was always talking about re- new releases of Minecraft on every freaking console out there. But anyway, yeah. So um, hopefully, you guys. I think I talked about five games. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to end uh, the little project here. But uh, the the little my little um, my little uh, trip here to uh, the event. Is, um, uh, so I'll just walk a bit around a bit more, see if I can grab anything else for you guys. If not, I'll just do a quick outro and give my general experience of uh, the conference itself. All right, guys, see you in a couple. Hey, guys, finally back with another segment for you guys. Uh, unfortunately, it's the end of the conference, Mary. I, I was only doing one day because uh, I, first I have to go work, unfortunately. <laughs> I got a real job to pay the bills and stuff like that, but, um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I visited a lot of stuff, a lot of games, because there's a, on the, on the exhibition floor, there's a lot of, there's like, it's like half half. there's like games, and then there's like, uh, dev stuff, like, uh, engines and stuff like that people can check out, so I wasn't really interesting and in, interested in those things. I uh, gave a couple business cards out, for sure, it was pretty fun. Uh, meeting people, talking to them, and uh, making networking and stuff like that. Basically, the uh, business stuff, you know how it works. Um, so, what I'll do in this segment, pretty much, is just pretty much talk about the, my general feel of the event, what what I see they could change and stuff like that. Uh, you know, g- general stuff, um, just my general opinion on what I think of uh, <clears throat> the Ottawa International Gaming Conference for 2015. I haven't gone to the other ones, of course. This is, like I mentioned before, it's my first uh, first event, uh, first conference whatsoever. I never went to a conference before. Well, if I don't count that one when I was a kid there, uh, more of a student. But anyway, uh, yeah, so, uh, well, first, uh, right after I finished recording the last one, there was uh, actually a lunch there. And uh, to my amaze and behold, if you guys know know me a bit, you know that I'm French and I love poutine. And there was a poutine bar there, so... Uh, I went free for all on that ate a couple of times. Anyway, lunch is lunch. Putin is enjoyable for anybody. If you don't know what that is, check that out. It's definitely good. If you guys are American or from not in Canada. Um, so for the for the conference itself, uh, there's a lot going on. There's also a one 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 spot uh, I didn't get a chance to look a lot um, at was uh, the, the there's an art section. I don't know a lot about art, so it wasn't. It, there's, there was a lot of cool art that I, I glanced by quickly when I passed, and uh, everything looked pretty good. It was gaming. It looked gaming inspired. It, it looked really interesting. Uh, for the floor itself, like I said before, the conference is really oriented between for the conference conferences and the conferences are really game for game developers more or less. So you got like how how do how to properly promote your game how do how to get your game started how to de- properly design or uh, process your all those little stuff uh, promotion of uh, Unity engine those things I know the the Unity engine I know a bit but not enough to uh, call myself a developer or anything like that but anyway uh, for so what I did basically I just did the tw- uh, f- uh, going around the floor you see before the other segments before I talked about the video games I checked out. Uh, stuff that interested me a lot and stuff like that. Uh, f- 
the organization wise, I I like it. It's it's not what I thought it was. Of course, it's I'm, it, it, I, I wouldn't be I I can't compare it to like E3 or Gamescon or stuff like that. It's uh, like the the German Gamescon and stuff like that. Like those are big events. They attract tens of thousands of people and they're they're in wide open spaces. Like in the where where this was taking place, it's called National Art Center in Ottawa, right across the Parliament. And uh, it was um, it was actually pretty fun. Everything was laid out properly. It was against walls. Uh, uh, I don't know why I need to tell the details of the layout, but uh, everything was fun. People there, and they're all really nice, like Canadians should be most of the, most of the time. And uh, uh, the games, the games were fun. I, I like I like seeing the, the mix of like students and, ga- and the gaming companies combined together, uh, like kiosks between besides kiosks promoting their games and stu- aspiring programmers out of uh, freshly gra- graduated that are uh, might be the future generation of uh, of gaming as we know it um a lot of cool indie game for, like i think i said it in the the last segment but the game the games there was uh, were a lot of the games were very space oriented which i don't mind they, they were all pretty good um uh the for what else can i talk about there is besides the game already what i however you mentioned um like i i <laughs> yeah, for my general opinion, I really like it. What I would like to see is probably get like a bigger, bigger hall where they get more exhibitors, get bigger exhibitors. I know they're working on that. It's only their fourth year. It's in Ottawa. The thing is, if you don't know Ottawa, Ottawa is a very government place. And one thing I would like to see also, like the, what they said at the the opening statement before the keynote there, uh, that Ottawa should uh, is trying to become a very, like a one of those big places like Montreal or Toronto or stuff like that, which the, there's a lot of developers from Ottawa, like, like what I could see here, and there were really interested games. They're really intelligent people. A lot of these people worked for, some of them worked for Sony, Microsoft, Ubisoft, EA. Uh, yeah, it was really interesting talking to them. I didn't get a chance to talk to the, 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 a lot of the people, but uh, because of the, and even if it's a small conference, a lot of people are talking to a lot of talking a lot to them and uh, more important people than me of course are talking to them like other big developers and stuff like that uh, what's nice about um, uh, what, one thing I would have liked to see I know they were trying to get it uh, they were trying to get for future installments of the conference they get like uh, Ubisoft there would would have been interesting uh, the, Ubisoft did sponsor the event that's the important thing to remember they did sponsor like four students four students from Montreal to go to the event and actually the the uh, uh, Ottawa G- International Game Conference actually sponsored their like their living quarters or wherever they were living while they were coming here and stuff like that. that's what I read generally which is pretty cool that's it helps it helps gamers get out there get networking and stuff like that which is really interesting of course I'm there for more for the games and I I, I was pleasantly more surprised because at first at first when I uh, before I, I I got in there, I really thought it was just a conference because they didn't tell you what exhibitors were going to be there. So well, they probably did, but I, I guess I didn't look hard enough. But um, um, yeah, the exhibitors were really fun. Like you had Microsoft, but Microsoft was promoting something else. Uh, I didn't get a chance to stop. It was more like I said, it's an engine thing or a background component for for console or gaming or stuff like that. Which which I I don't want to. It's not. It's not that it's boring, but I, it's, my site's not oriented to that. So there's no point in me in stopping and talking to these guys, even if they're nice people. Um, of course, like the the only thing I would see is g- try to get try to get uh, give a, as much of an importance to the exhibitors, wh- which it is. They they are present. You they're, they're, when you get in, that's the first thing you see the exhibitors. But I would like to see like a bigger floor space for exhibitors. Of course. The, the location is, is limited in space, but it's still a nice location. But I would like to see, like, of course, like they like I said before, they're they're working on it to try to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're, it's only going to get bigger from here because the, the floor is full, right? The, it, it can only go from bigger to bigger. It won't go smaller than that, that's for sure, because there's so much people already in there. And then the, the fact that they actually give lunch to is actually pretty nice. I don't know if they're going to do that when they're going to be way bigger than that, but it's actually a nice little thing. It's a nice little touch to the, to the whole event. Um, and yeah, that's, that's my general opinion. I really enjoyed from my first conference. Um, I don't know when's the next conference I would, uh, I would go. I, 
I would like to, I, of course, I would like to go to like E3 eventually. I know this that's also uh, game developers oriented, but the ex- exhibition floor is actually, it like looks very interesting. Um, of course, my main focus there too is also to get, not a, not to be shy when I talk to people because I like asking questions about their games and they're, they're actually quite responsive because when they talk to me, I actually know, well, I think, I, I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about games, not, not game development in sorts, but um, like more like talking about games, past games, future games, consoles. I understand those things enough and I'm, I'm good enough with them to understand to talk to them about it. But um, yeah, my main focus would be for me personally, for personal uh, effort would be to, I really like, like you've seen, you, you saw, unfortunately I didn't, I didn't get a chance to interview any, anybody because one thing, because I'm shy to try to interview somebody, and I don't want to stuck somebody's my phone in their face so they they can talk in it. But uh, maybe maybe next event I go to, I'll try a bit more when they have more people have more represent representatives. And it wasn't it's it's a bit weird because there wasn't there's no media here, so it's um, there's no media here, so it, it would look kind of weird if I'm the only guy with a phone with a like my site's not super big. I won't get my I don't I don't get my my head inflated like I'm a I'm an IGN or SM, something like that, but um, definitely, uh, uh, definitely work on the shyness for sure on that one. But besides that, I had fun time. There's a ton of people varying from all ages and whatnot, and no work work type and stuff like that, and made some connection, like I said before, and stuff like that. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed the the, the podcast, the special podcast, which I haven't done in a long time. I'm trying really hard. Because you guys have to understand, doing it alone, uh, especially when if I don't new, do news anymore, it requires a lot of. Um, here we'll address this now. I like uh, if you guys have come to the site and you don't see much stuff anymore, is because I don't, I don't do news anymore because, like I mentioned before, it's time consuming and that. But I will. I am trying to do video game reviews, review games that I am streaming, because uh, streaming is my main focus now. That's what I do. I just bought a new laptop a couple weeks ago for to do that, like a very powerful laptop. Uh, I got the consoles for it. I got. I'm working hard on that. I got a green screen and everything. If you guys come check it out, uh, I'll promote that in a couple of minutes there. Um, so hopefully, guys, you enjoyed everything. Um, yeah. I'll, oh, sorry. I'll go back. Sorry, I'm going. I'm bouncing back and forth. The, I lose my train of thought sometimes, or if that's the right expression, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, if you've seen the site, I right now I'm, I'm mostly posting my on you I, on my YouTube page. When you go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash me time gamer, you guys can see I'm working on my uh, me time gamer plays playlists or spot where you can see all those are basically highlights uh, highlights that I do for video for uh, for my streaming. I won't I don't do just it's not random videos. It's really series that I do. Like I got prop hunt uh, from Gmod. I got uh, when I'm recording this. I got a Skate Three Part One going up soon. I got some Bloodborne working in there. I got some uh, State of Decay, which I would have to go back to. Sorry about that. State of Decay, which I have to go back to very soon. And um, yeah, so hopefully you guys are not too angry at me if you guys don't see any news on the site anymore. Uh, Hopefully you guys can read the article with this. I'll, with, with the podcast, I'll try to make a nice, decent article. I won't write down everything I talk about. I'll probably just give general information. I didn't get a chance to take a lot of pictures because my attention was focused on talking to people. But uh, hopefully you guys will still enjoy. If you enjoyed, please hit that follow. If, if you guys really enjoy my site, please uh, bookmark the website. Uh, check out If you want to help out the website, go hit that. check out the affiliate, metimegamer.com forward slash affiliates. Uh, we got G2A.com, which I've used personally in the last few weeks, uh, last few weeks because I've started playing more PC games. Uh, I've used it a lot. Uh, Amazon link is going. Uh, we got Microsoft, PlayStation, Skull Candy, uh, T Fury, um, Ting Geek, uh, and a couple more in there. You guys can go check. It's a nice list for you guys to check out. Oh, and actually, if one thing I forgot to do because this is the first podcast since I actually got a sponsor for my stream. It's uh, it's uh, from uh, neosync.net. Uh, I'll try. So you guys can check it out. I'll put it. I'll, if you if if I think about it, it'll, there probably was an ad at the beginning. You guys can check out that you probably heard. So that's it. Uh, so I'll mention it again here just in case I forget to do it. Neosync neosync dot uh, dot net for slash me time uh, for slash me time gamer. Use that link to help us out. It's uh, basically a uh, 
a website that helps you get server like Minecraft servers, dedicated servers, and all the all that jazz. And um, you pay a monthly fee. There's multiple uh, uh, products you guys can check out there. And uh, once you're at checkout, uh, at at checkout, put the uh, offer code Me Time Gamer, all one word, and you get 30% off your first month of uh, server usage and stuff like that. And you help the website out. Nothing better than that. You give it a little, I give it a little. We all get, everybody's happy, all kumbaya and high-fiving and all that stuff. So if you guys want to follow me, you can do so. You can go, uh, the best part, the best way you can see me, where I promote the most, is twitch.tv forward slash me time gamer. I'm there almost every day. If I'm not there, you can ca you can talk to me on Twitter. You can, uh, you can, um, you can go on Twitter. I'm at me time gamer. Uh, I'm usually tweeting every day uh, as often as I can. If I'm not there, I'm usually editing videos for YouTube. So definitely go check out youtube.com forward slash user forward slash me time gamer. And if you're doing that Facebook thing, go on facebook.com forward slash me time gamer. And uh, did I say that right? Facebook.com forward slash me time area. That one's the page that's hitting it a bit there. It's not, it's not being, I'm not using it as much as I should. I'm trying, but it's a bit more hard on, uh, on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, to I can't I'm trying to figure out a way to do post my videos and up there but there's not a lot of I have more interaction on Twitter so you guys are better off using Twitter and Facebook of course and if you guys are on Reddit if you guys want to talk on Reddit I'm not there often but you can check out old articles and uh, I'm going to try to do more posting my videos on Reddit I might do that uh, later this week try to post all my videos on there so you guys can check it out So thank you so much, guys, for listening to podcasts. If you're if you're one of if you worked if you worked at the uh, if uh, you you guys work uh, worked at the conference there, congratulations! You're promoting awesome stuff from Ottawa and making Ottawa hopefully eventually a gaming gaming center where everybody can enjoy and uh, making awesome games. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. I'm tired right now. I gotta go to work. So uh, talk to you guys later. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Stay fresh, guys.